Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? It's Cohen back here again today with another video. And today, we're going to be talking about the Houston Rockets, who have been the worst team in the league so far. They're sitting at a 2-12 and record, the bottom of the Western Conference and the NBA as a whole. They've got the second worst net rating in the league, only ahead of the Detroit Pistons. And it's a bit concerning what's going on, because obviously, they're tanking. They're trying to rebuild. They're trying to get Victor Wembenyama, and they're a very young roster. But other young rosters, for example, OKC, the Spurs, the Pacers, the Magic, are all showing signs of improvement and things to be excited about. The Rockets, meanwhile, only have a couple of those positives and a whole lot more negatives, and Rockets fans are getting antsy. Every time I scroll my timeline after a Rockets game, there's a lot of Rockets fans talking about how nervous they are, how they're seeing these other teams that are rebuilding make these strides, but it feels like they haven't made any progress. They've been the worst team in the league the past two seasons, and right now, if this pace continues, they will be the first team in NBA history to be the worst team in the league three straight years. It's never happened before, and it looks like right now, the Rockets are probably going to make that history, which is concerning if you're a fan of a rebuild. Obviously, you want to get Victor Wembanyama on this team, but you also want to see signs of improvement. So in this video, I want to talk about some of the positives and a lot more negatives that I've seen from the Rockets this season, why Rockets fans should be a bit concerned, and kind of how to fix some of those issues. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these uploads, and let's go ahead and get right into it. Despite all the doom and gloom I talked about to start the video, there have been some positives for the Rockets so far. And the biggest one is probably Jalen Green, who right now has been playing some pretty good basketball. Last night against the Los Angeles Clippers, he had 25 points, 6 rebounds, and 7 assists. And on the season, he's averaging 22 points per game on 43.3% shooting, 37.5% from 3, 4.1 rebounds, 3.1 assists, and 0.8 steals. Every single one of those numbers is an improvement from last season, which is exactly what you want to see for your sophomore guy that's supposed to be your franchise player in the future. He looks legitimately like he's going to be a 25, 27, maybe even up to 30 point per game score as he continues to grow and develop and get better. And he's doing this without a lot of talent surrounding him, which is very impressive. Impressive. I think the efficiency will only keep rising. He's a high level athlete, so he can get to the rim with ease and make a lot of really tough finishes. Obviously, knocking down a ton of three pointers as well. I've been very impressed with what I've seen from Jalen Green so far, and he's shown a lot of the flashes that made the Pistons somewhat consider him for the first overall pick and made the Rockets take him over Evan Mobley. So I've been very excited by what I've seen from Jalen Green. He looks the part of a future franchise cornerstone. Then you have Alperin Shengun, who I feel like has kind of flown under the radar this season, but is quietly having a phenomenal year also as a sophomore player. Last night against the Clippers, he had 16 points, four rebounds, and one assist. To start this season, he's averaging around 16 points per game and about eight rebounds. He's been really solid posting up to some of the best footwork in the league. There are very few bigs that can stop Shen Goon when he posts up, and he's only, I believe, like 6'9", which makes it even more impressive. He can, you know, hit you with a dream shake. He can go with an up and under. He can just shoot a post hook. He's pretty effective on those. I love what I've seen from him working out of the post. And of course, he's also a really solid playmaker. He's not averaging very many assists, but that shouldn't fool you because his vision is a lot better better than the assist numbers show in the stat sheet. He is a high level guy making plays out of the post, especially when they send a couple of guys to try and stop him when he's going on a scoring tear. I love what I've seen from Shengun. The defense and the shooting from three still aren't quite there, but you know, what I've seen from him so far is very promising once again for a player in just his second season and not surrounded by a ton of talent. Also want to give a quick shout out to Tari Eason, who's looked really solid in the opportunities he's been given, a rookie that a lot of people were high on coming into the season and he's looked great in the role that he has. Of course, I still want to see him get more minutes, but that comes down to Steven Silas and the coaching staff, and honestly, that's where my biggest problem with this team lies. When Steven Silas was hired as head coach of the Rockets, even though they were really bad in his first season, I gave him some slack because he came into the situation expecting to coach Russ, Harden, and a contending team. Instead, it was this on-the-fly rebuild where Russ gets traded and then Harden gets traded, and you're in this weird spot where you're not going to really compete, but you have some players that feel like they should be competing now, like John Wall, Victor Oladipo, Christian Wood, Kelly Olynyk came in and was balling out of nowhere. It was just a really weird scenario for them to be in. And so I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I thought he got done dirty by the whole situation. Coming into the second season, wasn't super impressed with what I saw from him. And this season, I think he's probably been the worst coach in the league so far. 
far, it just feels like he's way in over his head. Obviously, we talked about the fact that their net rating is second worst. They're the worst team in the league on pace to be the worst team in the league for the first time ever in three straight seasons. And he's been the coach for all three of those seasons. And it's not just like, there are some coaches that are pretty good offensively, but not great defensively. There are some coaches that are great defensively, but can't really run an offense. He doesn't feel like he knows how to do any of those things. They're one of two teams joining the Detroit Pistons that are bottom five in both offensive rating and defensive rating so far. His rotations and minutes don't really make sense. With a rebuilding team, you would expect the young guys to get a lot of the reps, but then you have a guy like Josh Christopher, who was really solid last season, and I feel like could contribute a lot to this team, getting just eight minutes per game, less than Garrison Matthews, who is 26 years old, and given he is a shooter, this team needs to have some shooting on the court for Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr., but he's shooting just like 34% when that's the only thing he's supposed to do well. He doesn't feel like a player you should be prioritizing over a young guy like Josh Christopher, who could be a great long-term fit for your team. Everything they do feels like something that a high school or an AAU team would do. And obviously as a young team, you're not gonna have the highest level of talent, but you have to put those young players in positions to succeed and grow and learn their game. He's not doing that. Nobody is in a position to succeed. Every time they go down the court, it just feels like it's kind of, okay, do whatever, which builds bad habits. It doesn't really contribute to a winning environment or a feeling of growth. And that's why I think some of the players on the Rockets feel like they've kind of regressed at moments because they're not in a position to optimize their games, play the game that they have and recognize their limitations, put guys in positions to succeed. He's not doing that, which has been probably my biggest issue is that it just feels like they're running around out there and not really doing anything that an NBA basketball team typically does. And that leads to, like I said, a lot of guys not living up to their potential. One guy in particular, Jabari Smith Jr. On the season, Jabari is averaging 10.1 points per game, 6.7 rebounds, just under an assist, and shooting 31.6% from the field and 29.7% from three. Now, obviously, a lot of this is on Jabari. He's supposed to be able to knock down these shots. That's why they drafted him third overall, because at Auburn, he made the most contested of looks look like nothing. He was just knocking them down with ease and coming to Houston that hasn't translated so far. Even on open looks, he's just not hitting his threes or even shots inside the arc. He doesn't have much of a handle to create for himself. And so he's just not been efficient. I think eventually he will figure it out and go back to being a really solid shooter. But so far, it's been a big struggle. And obviously that is on him for the most part. But this is also a matter of a coach not highlighting his strengths. He is a shooter. He is not a guy who is much of a self-creator like we talked about. So put him in sets, have him run off of screens, get wide open looks, or at least looks that aren't super contested. Don't have him just spot up in the corner like he does basically every single possession. He runs on the court, sits in the corner, maybe eventually he'll rotate over as a player drives to the basket and spot it for threes, but he doesn't really do much otherwise. He doesn't really get the ball like that in the offense. They don't run sets for him. They just have him spot up and sit in the corner. That's basically all Jabari does. You spent a third overall pick in the NBA draft on this player. Put him in positions to succeed and try different things. Have him run more sets. They don't really run sets at all, to be honest, but at least let him get the chance to operate. He's not getting those opportunities like he probably should. Sure, he's gonna miss a lot of shots, but he's a young player. If you're gonna be a bad team like you are now, at least be bad because you're giving these young players that you think could eventually be franchise cornerstones the opportunities to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. He's never gonna become a high level shooter if he can't get in rhythm and doesn't get opportunities to score the ball. Some of it also comes down to the fact that the Rockets just don't have a high level playmaker on their roster right now. I think eventually they'll have to bring one in because Kevin Porter Jr. has been their point guard the past few years. And I've always said, I'm kind of skeptical of his fit as a point guard. I see him as more of a two, and I've reached a point where I'm pretty set in stone on that opinion. I don't think KPJ can be the high-level facilitator for your team if you're trying to compete down the line like the Houston Rockets want to be. I think he can still be a fine NBA player. I'm not saying that he's bad or anything like that, but he's just not a point guard. That's just not his role. He's shown some playmaking chops. He's averaging 5.6 assists, but alongside that, he's averaging four turnovers. His court vision isn't quite there. And additionally, he just doesn't really look for guys a lot of the time. It seems like he has a lot more of a scorer's mindset than a facilitator's one. And that's something that you can't really teach that much. You can help players kind of shift that a little bit, but in terms of just true court vision and knowing the game of being a like playmaker, that's kind of something you just kind of have to have. And I don't think KPJ has that. I still think, like I said, he can be a fine NBA player on this team, but probably more as a bench guy. 
I just don't see him being your point guard for the future. I think Jabari Smith needs a high level playmaker next to him. Same with Jalen Green. If you can get Jalen Green, a playmaker that can average like eight, nine assists per game, keep putting him in opportunities to catch lobs or dive to the basket or get catch and shoot threes, that's going to go a long way to his development too. So that's another thing I think they need to take a look at, especially in this draft. If they get like the second overall pick through the lottery, Scoot Henderson should be a Houston Rocket basically immediately. With all that being said, I don't think this Rockets rebuild is doomed or anything. Right now, they're on pace to get Victor Wembanyama. And if you bring him in and have a core of Jalen Green, Jubari Smith, who I still believe in, it's very early in his career, and Victor Wembanyama, you're looking pretty good. You're in a pretty good spot. You bring in a playmaker, you bring in a guy who can be a three and D threat at the three spot, and boom, all of a sudden, you could potentially be a really solid team. But that is, of course, all down to the lottery. They only have a 14% chance, even if they continue to have the worst record in the league, of getting Victor Wembanyama. If you get a Scoot Henderson, I think he's also an immaculate fit on this team. But as you fall down the draft, it's a bit more concerning because while there are still some high-level players, you still need to bring in another guy that can be a cornerstone next to Jalen Green and potentially Jabari Smith Jr. So I'm interested to see how this Rocket season continues to go. Eric Gordon is another piece that I feel like should have been traded a really long time ago. And now it feels like he's lost a lot of his value. So that's been kind of a mistake. I don't love what they've done to kind of fill in this roster too. They just, I don't know. The Rocket Rockets, for some reason, have just felt like they're kind of a mess so far. It goes down to the coaching, the front office, the players themselves, I think, have to be better. All in all, this Rockets rebuild is not going so great right now, but one great lottery can always fix those issues. I appreciate y'all watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these uploads. And comment down below what you think about the Houston Rockets. How can they fix this team? What do you think of Jalen Green, Jabari Smith Jr., and the rest of the young guys on the roster? I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.